欢迎各位记。Welcome to today's press conference at the CGO on widespread flooding caused by the remnant of Typhoon Haiyuan. We have with us today Secretary for Administration Mr. Chen Kuok Ki, Deputy Chief Secretary for Administration Mr. Chen Wenheng. Miss Secretary for Se Security, Mr. Tang Ping Keng, Acting Director of Hong Kong Observatory, Mr. Li Lap Shun, Acting Director of uh, Drainage Services, Mr. Choi Si K, Commissioner for Transport, Miss Angela Lee, Director of Home Affairs, Mrs. Alice Chung, Secretary for Labor and Welfare, Mr. Chris Sun. Director for Highways, Mr. Jimmy Chen, and Director for Services of Fire Services, Mr. Andy Yang. We'll first hear from the Chief Secretary before we take questions from the floor. CS. Good afternoon, members of the public, friends from the media. I welcome you all to today's joint press conference. Last night and today, Hong Kong experienced. Serious rainfall that hasn't been seen in the past hundred years. It has brought a significant impact as a result of the remnants of the low trough of at uh, the trough of low pressure of uh, Typhoon Highway. We have experienced heavy rainfall and widespread flooding. Transportation has been seriously disrupted. Last night, the observatory issued the first. Black rainstorm warning last night. This year, the rain came heavily and suddenly. We have recorded the highest、uh, rainfall on an hourly basis since 1884. During black rainstorm warning, the chief executive at 1:30 a.m. posted something on the social media, appealing to the general public to take into account the actual situation and stay where is it where it is safe. We appeal to the public to remain vigilant, and we disseminate information. And at 4:30 and at 2:30 a.m., we have issued a press release and said. That、uh, we would make further announcement before half past six as to whether there will be suspension of school and work. And at 5:30 a.m. this morning, we have issued extreme condition warning. The, the warning would be in force before noon. And the labor department has also made announcements in re in relation to work arrangements. And before 11 a.m., the government extended the extreme condition validity to at least 6 p.m. today. We have taken consideration of the weather condition, the situation in Hong Kong, and the reports made by various departments. I announce now that the extreme conditions will be extended to at least. Midnight tonight. Let me repeat: the extreme conditions will be extended to at least、uh, midnight tonight. Even if the rainstorm warning has been lowered to amber or red, or if they are lift are、uh, dis are、uh, scrapped altogether, work arrangements under. Extreme conditions will equal to the arrangements in a condition that、um, that is Typhoon Eight. When Typhoon Eight is in force, we will continue to monitor the transport situation. At around nine o'clock tonight, we will make further arrange further announcements about transportation arrangements. Please find a way to keep yourself posted. In view of this sudden heavy rain and the resultant flooding, different departments have been working overnight to handle situations. 
the cross departmental steering committee headed by me and the emergency monitoring and support center under the security Bu bureau are working tirelessly to handle different situations the highways department uh, the home affairs department as well as the drainage services department are working together to mount joint operations to attend to emergency situations. This time is the first time when the extreme conditions warning or signal has been hoisted. I understand that there are many inquiries. We have, re we have issued press releases to explain the situation. In short, the work arrangements under the extreme conditions is just like when Typhoon signal number eight is in force. So unless there are unless it, there are essential staff who have an arrangement with their employees to be on duty at workplaces when the extreme conditions exist, employees are advised to stay at the place they are currently in or in a safe place instead of heading for work. In order to enhance understanding about the work arrangements, um, various departments will follow up on inquiries. We'll continue to monitor the situation regarding flooding. We will accord priority to the uh, safety of the general public. Different departments will continue to work to address to emergency situations so that um, the public can return to their normal lives as soon as possible. I'll now give the floor to various government departments about the work they've done in view of the emergency situations and the plan forward. We'll now hear from the acting director of the observatory, Mr. Lee Lepshun. As we've been affected by the trough of low pressure associated with remnant of Hai Khoi, we have experienced torrential rain. As you can see from the radar, from the radar that uh, since last night, that uh, trough of low pressure has been passing over Hong Kong. At first, the rain was localized in the northern part of the New Territories. As a result, before 8 p.m. yesterday, the observatory issued um, localized heavy rain reminder and a special announcement of flooding. Subs later on, the area affected has been extended, so we have issued um, heavy rain warning and relevant warnings. Compared to the tracking of tropical cyclones, The uh, path of trough of low pressure is subject to rapid changes. So when it comes to warning of heavy rainfall, it's always been a great challenge to observatories all over the world. In the past 24 hours, we have recorded over 300 millimeters of rainfall in majority parts of Hong Kong, in ho some parts in Hong Kong, Kowloon, and Hong and New Territories, so we've recorded over 600 milli milliliters of rainfall. We have recorded an hourly rainfall of 158.1 millimeters of uh, rainfall, which is the highest record since 1884. In the past 24 hours, we have recorded the total amount of uh, rainfall over 600 millimeters. That's about a quarter of uh, an average annual rainfall. That is, we have recorded in the past 24 hours a quarter of the rainfall recorded on average over one year. So it is indeed an extreme condition. We'll now hear from the uh, acting director of drainage services. From 11 p.m. yesterday to 12 a.m. this morning, within one hour, 158.1 millimeters of hourly rainfall was recorded. This is the highest record since 1884. During the torrential rain, 400 to 500 millimeters of rainfall were recorded in a lot of 
districts. In Chunwan and Taipan, the rainfall was 600 millimeters. This is over one fourth of the 2400 millimeters of rainfall recorded annually. The Drainage Services Department activated warning under the emergency center. And announcement on flooding was issued and drains were dealt with. And we also uh, asked subcontractors and contractors to help deal with the flood. The emergency response teams, well, the number is about 72, and we have 1,250 workers working in teams, and the number of teams will be increased to 144, involving 554 workers. As of today, we have received 60 reports of flooding, and 40 of them have been dealt with, and the rest of the reports, we are working on them. The rainfall recorded has um, we, our drains cannot handle the rainfall recorded, and there are debris as well as tree branches that were gushed into drains, which caused blockage. All these have to do with the heavy rainfall recorded. The drainage services department has working hard, been has been working hard on um, enhancing the capacity of our drains, and so far we have completed 94 projects. In recent years, the number of black spots of flooding has been greatly reduced. As of now, we have already tackled 127 black spots of flooding. The floods caused by this heavy downpours have been um, significantly dealt with as at 11.40 p.m. last night, we got a notification from the Shenzhen authorities that the Shenzhen Reservoir will start discharging uh, water from 12 a.m. during midnight. No flooding has been caused because of the release of water. So the flooding in Hong Kong has nothing to do with the water release from Shenzhen. In Sha Tao Kok and Lai Tung Chun, there has been flooding because of the heavy rainfall. The emergency center has already deployed manpower to work on it. And we have worked on the blockage of the drains to mitigate the flooding. The continuous rainfall we saw has reached the capacity of our roads and drainage system. That's why we see extensive road floods. And last night, we activated the relevant system to deal with the emergency situation. And we have arranged for contractors to clear the obstacles on roads as at 2 p.m. today, the highways department has received 70 reports of emergency situations on roads, including land subsidence as well as flood and landslides. Some of the roads we see uh, land subsidence as and the contractors are carrying out repair works and we are fixing the slopes. In some of the roads, such as roundabouts in Chai Wan, as well as in Yu Heng Street and in the peak, we need more time for carrying out the repair works. The highways department will continue to inspect roads in different districts and clear the roads as best as we can to resume road traffic. Director of Transport, uh, Commissioner for Transport, please. During the torrential rain, we have been monitoring the traffic condition in Hong Kong, and we've been in close liaison with uh, public transport operators. 
four railway lines apart from Shat Kit Me and Choi Hong stations, which have been suspended. The other railway services are still operating. We are reducing train services according to the needs. As for bus services, the bus companies are inspecting the road conditions and provide uh, bus services accordingly. And there are also uh, shuttle bus services from MTR stations. If the uh, warning is lifted tonight, uh, according to the situation, bus services overnight will be provided. It is believed that most of the bus services can resume by morning tomorrow. We want the public to pay attention to a few areas, including Chai Wan in Hong Kong Island, in the South uh, Hong Kong Island, as well as the peak. There will be repair works. Therefore, more time will be needed to see bus services resume in these areas. The transport department will continue to work closely with the uh, bus operators to come up with the bus routes that will still be in operation so that we will be able to resume bus services to the normal level once uh, the torrential rain is gone. We will make announcements in due course. Thank you. Head of Geoengineering Office, please. Last night, the Hong Kong Observatory issued the landslip warning. Our emergency centre has been in operation since then. So far, we have deployed 40 relevant technicians and engineers to give support and hold inspections. We have seen the highest record of rainfall in Hong Kong, and as at noon today, our office has received a total of 20 uh, landslide reports. Our engineers, together with other departments, as well as the police and the fire services department to handle the incidents. Six of the ha incidents have been uh, dealt with. We have recommended closing off some of the areas and we have ordered um, emergency works to be carried out. Our engineers have also uh, gone to the Hong Kong Island and the new territories, especially the areas which are uh, worst hit by the torrential rains, to check the slopes as well as the landslide situation. Hopefully, we can complete the inspection works in areas which are hard hit by landslides. And our emergency center will continue to operate until we see a lower risk of landslides in Hong Kong. We hope that members of the public can cooperate with the government and uh, stay away from slopes. Secretary for Security, good afternoon. I know that you are very concerned about the impact caused by the water discharge from the Shenzhen Reservoir. I'll give you an update. According to the existing notification mechanism, the Shenzhen, um, the Shenzhen Authority would uh, consider notifying Hong Kong um, as giving us as much as a three hours notice. But if there are situations when they don't. They can't give us a three-hour notice, and they will notify us as soon as possible. Given the situation um, being so volatile and so urgent, we have received notification from the Shenzhen Authority 45 minutes before the water discharge that uh, there will be such an exercise. We've immediately uh, notified a new the various uh, district officers, the di drainage services departments, the police, as well as the social welfare department for them to put in place arra appropriate arrangements uh, to evacuate and to help villages. The district officers and uh, the Home Affairs Department has sent shuttle buses to pick up villages that, that may be affected by the water discharge. Villagers at these areas thought there was no such need. And for these six villages, there, uh, there was a no series of flooding subsequent, subsequently found. At 23.44, we have issued a press release to notify the general public about 
the water discharge exercise. I understand that some members of the public might concern that the discharge may cause flooding in Hong Kong. The fact is that the water discharge by Shenzhen uh, authorities is a safety is a safeguard to protect the general public, and it is a planned exercise. Water discharge from the river will effectively drain the water into a river to maintain the integrity of the dams. We have not noticed any raise of water level in um, in our rivers to a level that is above the capacity, and there is, hasn't been any flooding recorded as a result of the water discharge. And it seems that the various floods found in the new territories has no relations with the water discharge. The observatory raised um, the rain, black rainstorm warning at 11.05 p.m. We have immediately triggered level three um, alert. And we have also set up the emergency monitoring and support center to coordinate work among different departments. The police and frontline departments have put in place equipment to provide assistance. We have received 718 requests for assistance, and the Fire Services Department has received 343 requests. They are related to injuries, traffic accidents, and floodings. Most of these requests have been handled, and the rest are being handled at the moment. As a result of the heavy rain and the flooding, a lot of vehicles stalled, and as a result, they blocked the roads. When the flood subsided, we have already handled about 130 of these uh, stalled vehicles. Over half of these vehicles um, are of that blocked major roads have been removed. We try to remove these vehicles as quickly as possible, and the. And our team has also been mobilized uh, to provide assistance to Leiyun, Mun, Shatin, and Hong Kong Islands to handle floods. And we will, if necessary, provide further assistance. Uh, that is in relation to the um, civil um, aid services. The Fire Services Department has received 343 requests for assistance. Uh, they cover Chai Wan, Wan Chai, Aberdeen, um, Wong Tai Sin, Morrison Road, Tai Po, Xiang Shui, Fan Ling, Sha Tao Kok, and Yun Long. These are uh, seriously affected areas. The observatory put in place the black rainstorm warning. We have immediately dispatched our emergency response team covering about 100 uh, staff members to handle the upsurge of requests for assistance. In order to enhance our efficiency, we have asked commanders of various areas to take their posts. We've taken into account the actual situation. We have deployed resources to areas that are that have been mostly affected. We have also deployed a small vessels at various locations uh, to handle floods. We've also made an appeal on social media to ask members of the public to stay calm, to stay in a safe place, and uh, pay attention to the news. We have so far helped 20 injured persons and evacuated over 110 People. As at 1 p.m. today, we have handled 341 um, reports of floods, 10 reports of landslip, 58 reports of um, people being trapped in lift, as well as uh, 20, 214 fire alarm in incidents, as well as other matters. We'll now hear from uh, the Home Affairs Department Director. After the black rainstorm warning was 
hoisted at 11.05 p.m., we have immediately started the emergency coordination center and made arrangements for those in need to stay at our temporary shelters. The first one was set up at 11.35, that is only 30 minutes after the warning has had been hoisted. As at 1 a.m., we have opened 12 such centers. The Northern District Dis District Office has arranged special vehicles to pick up villagers from affected um, villagers. As at 12.30 today, we have opened 15 temporary shelters, helping 325 people, 233 are staying at uh, shelters in the North District. We have also deployed resources to dispatch vehicles uh, to send some of these uh, peoples to the shelters at Taipo. In the Southern District and Ta and the Southern District and Chun Wan, the district care teams have been mobilized uh, to provide assistance in the operation of the temporary shelter. They've also been dispatched uh, to carry out inspections at various locations. For those who have been affected and for those who are in need of financial assistance, we have um, put in place special funds to help them. Various charitable organizations have also um, made available relief funds to help those in need. Assistance will be provided by the district offices. The district officer of the Northern District has also contacted uh, various personalities in the district to ask uh, for financial assistance to help those in need. What remains is clearance. The chief executive has already triggered the government-wide mobilization to help with a post heavy rain assistance. We are making arrangements in relation to this. We'll hear this from the Secretary for Labor and Welfare. Good afternoon, everyone. Employees and employers in Hong Kong have always been following guidelines issued by the Labor Department in relation to work arrangements. As the Secretary for Administration mentioned, when extreme conditions are enforced, employers should not require employees to go to work. When the extreme conditions signal is enforced, whether there is any uh, black rainstorm warning, the, the extreme conditions signal itself is equal to a T8 signal. I mean, in terms of the effect, I'd like to take this opportunity to remind employers for employees who are unable to return to work or return to work on time, employers should not, without good reason, uh, withhold salary, deduct the um, attendance bonus, impose sanctions, or terminate these employees. Deductions should not be made against the vic the annual leave, rest days, or um, any kind of leave. Under health and safety guidelines, employers have the duty to provide a safe working environment for employees. So. It is now the Q&A session. Please identify your uh, the organizations you represent before you ask the questions. Please limit yourselves to two questions. The gentleman on my left. Good afternoon. I'm from Now TV. Extreme conditions warning was issued at 5:30 a.m. How come the guidelines from the Labor Department were issued at 7 a.m. only? Also, as mentioned by Secretary for Labor and Welfare, how come employers? Um, should follow the guidelines. How come the government do not uh, sus ask employers to suspend work? Thank you for your question. At 5.34 a.m., the government issued the extreme conditions warning. At 7.10 a.m., the press release from the Labor Department set out 
things that employers and employees should look out for during extreme conditions. First, employers should not ask um, unnecessary personnel to go to work, and also they should not deduct uh, employees' leave or salary in an unreasonable manner. All these years, during extreme conditions or during rainstorms, the guidelines have been in place and have been followed by the public. Even during inclement weather, some of the staff or personnel still have to go to work. For instance, hospital staff or staff at uh, care homes have to go to work during extreme weathers. So that's why we don't think we should impose an arrangement across the border or across the board. And I th we recommend employers to follow our guidelines, therefore. The lady at the front, please. I'm from Shenzhen TV. The government mentioned about the Shenzhen discharge of water. Did the Hong Kong government communicate with the Shenzhen authorities in relation to the water release? Also, during extreme weather, is there a regular mechanism between the Hong Kong government and the Shenzhen um, authorities? Thank you. Secretary for Security, please. There is a mechanism between Shenzhen authorities and our government in relation to water release. There is a mechanism in place whenever there is water release we have a mechanism that we follow. Normally, we give three hours of um, notification, but this time the rainfall is unexpected. So 46 minutes in advance of the water release, we were notified by the Shenzhen authorities. We want to safeguard the safety of the public. We made arrangements to pick up our villages, and if necessary, we arrange for the villages to be evacuated and move into the temporary shelters. But this time, we see that the water release didn't pose a direct impact on the villages. And we didn't see serious flooding in the relevant villages. To conclude, we closely liaise with the Shenzhen authorities in this regard. The third question. The lady at the back with spectacles. The South China Morning Post. Uh, first, comparing to the government's advanced preparation in handling Super Typhoon Solar, is the government unprepared for the flooding and reacting too late this time when officials only meet the public? Uh, 15 hours after the rainfall broke history record. And why isn't the chief executive meeting the press? Second, why hasn't the government used the 150 million emergency system to remind residents on the flooding? Uh, third, why does Hong Kong suffer from flooding severely this time? Uh, why does Wang Tai Sin hit in particular? And are the drainage system clogged? If so, why aren't they fixed before the storm? Thank you. So as regards preparedness, may I invite the Chief Secretary to answer your question? And then as regards the emergency system, may I invite DCS? And in regard to drainage and the um, type of the flooding related matters, may I invite the Hong Kong O and Drainage Services Department representatives to answer your questions? So the CS first, please. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, first of all, I think um, as the, our colleagues of the uh, from the Hong Kong Observatory has just mentioned uh, this heavy rain, the predictability is very low when compared with typhoon. So in typhoon, uh, we can make an early prediction, so we can make an early um, array preparation. But for this heavy rain, it was really, really so big that, uh, as mentioned by our colleague, it was once in uh, 500 years. So it's so big and so sudden and the predictability is so low. So that's why we cannot uh, to act as the uh, former uh, Typhoon uh, Sora that uh, we can uh, do the announcement very early beforehand. And um, for uh, the chief executive, as I mentioned, he did issue the press release, press statement in uh, at early, uh, as early as uh, in one uh, 1 a.m., around 1.30 a.m. this morning, reminding 
members of the public to be very careful because of a heavy rain. And throughout the night, the chief executive has always been uh, I mean, uh, giving us the steer and the directives on how to tackle the problem. And for the, um, you mean the $150 million uh, system? Actually, for this time, I mean, the, um, uh, we, we have issued different uh, uh, heavy rain signals to the public. So I think the announcement and, uh, is already enough to alert all, the mem all members of the public. And for the flooding drainage system, may I in invite uh, uh, our colleagues to, to reply uh, this question? Okay. Um, the flooding problem uh, this time, uh, during the last two, um, uh, last night, is mainly due to um, a heavy rainfall. Um, the drainage systems uh, has been uh, operated um, uh, according to uh, our uh, performance and uh, design standard. Uh, during the uh, rainfall event, we have uh, mobilized uh, emergency gangs uh, to um, attend to uh, 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 over 60 uh, uh, flooding uh, uh, cases, and most of them has been uh, 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 ratified uh, uh, before noon uh, today. Uh, any supplement from DCS? Yes. Um, the purpose of uh, issuing emergency notification via SMS is really to alert the public to uh, very sudden uh, emergencies uh, such, as, uh, such as power failure. Uh, but in this present case, uh, the onset of the um, black rainstorm is very clear. I think any uh, members of the public who is still awakening would have noticed uh, this uh, heavy rainstorm situation. So it won't be necessary to uh, uh, use that system to uh, send SMS to individual citizens to just really stating the obvious. Next question. The gentleman at the front. I'm from Commercial Radio. The Labour, a uh, Secretary for Labour and Welfare, mentioned that the arrangement is comparable to that under Typhoon Signal Number no. Eight. But according to the press release, um, we were just asked to refer to the arrangement under Typhoon Signal Number no. Eight, and some people still went to work. Do you think that the guidelines from the government is not clear enough? Then how come you wait until 6 a.m. this morning to issue the extreme conditions warning? How come when the chief executive issued the post on social media? He didn't call for employers to suspend work and ask schools to uh, suspend classes. And also, there were 12 hours between. And how come no government officials give instructions to the public? What work did the government do in between? Also, regarding flooding. Since Typhoon Salah hit Hong Kong, a lot of uh, trees had fallen, and is that partly to uh, partly the reason why the drains were flooded? We hear from the um, CS and the director for DSD. The rainfall we have experienced this time is extraordinary. We haven't seen this amount of rain. Um, for over 500 years. As you've heard from our colleagues, all through the night, different departments have been working tirelessly. The chief executive has been giving us directions, and at around 1 o'clock, he, he posted something to remind us or to be vigilant. At about 2 o'clock or so, press release was published to remind members of the public as to what they they should do. And we also forewarn that um, further announcements will be made in relation to work and school arrangements. At about 5 a.m., we have published another press release about um, the extreme conditions signal. At about 7 o'clock, the Labor Department issued a press release giving details about work arrangements under such conditions. So a number of press releases have been made throughout the night. The objective was 
to handle the situation as it unfolded. You asked, why couldn't it be earlier than five o'clock? But as you've heard, when it comes to rainfall, uh, the forecast is difficult. The forecast is difficult because it's fickle, and uh, it has a low predictability. As you've heard from the observatory, that uh, the extent, the coverage, the intensity when it comes to rainfall is difficult to predict. That's why we could not have warned members of the public earlier. But we have already issued four press releases throughout the night, keeping the public posted. When the black rainstorm warning was in force, we had to mobilize staff and resources to handle emergency situations. And today, as soon as we could, we get we um, host this press conference to give you further information. Your question is about um, Typhoon 8. Well, we have emphasized this arrangement. The fact that it's uh, similar to the arrangement on the T8 at about 7 o'clock in the press release. Of course, there is always room for improvement. I think the snack this time is that you can't compare our current situation with a typhoon because rainfall is difficult to predict. And the rain this time came suddenly and heavily beyond all our expectations. The, the amount of precipitation has far exceeded our capacity. It's just like you try to fill a bathtub with four times its capacity. Of course, it's going to overflow. After we have given you all the information, we will, of course, uh, plan uh, about our follow-up work to improve. DSD. After solar, we have immediately attended to blocked drains to remove blockages, debris. We carried out in inspections to make sure that they are not clogged up. But as did as CS4A said, the the design capacity was not for this unprecedented amount of rainfall. And sometimes a debris got washed into these drains, causing um, blockages. The lady at the back without glasses in black. I'm, ca I'm from cable TV. I would like to ask this uh, Secretary for Security and the CS. In relation to the uh, the uh, emergency alert. Well, just now it was mentioned that uh, there was uh, already the extreme conditions and the black rainfall, so we, you have given us a warning. But why don't you uh, notify members of the public using this emergency alert system so that uh, members of the public will all know? Have you underestimated the situation? That's why you have not used this uh, expensive system. Just now, you said that, um, well, relevant authorities received notification 45 minutes before the discharge, but the press release was only uh, May 16 minutes before the discharge. Do you expect that members of the public would have sufficient time to evacuate or make uh, preca take precautionary measures? Is such a short notice uh, in the in the future? Would you do something about it? Because you should have given sufficient time for members of the public to prepare. Just now, the question has been answered um, by the DCS, as you have heard, that this is unprecedented. That is, in relation to um, the amount of precipitation the and uh, the time when it happened. We have issued warnings to let the public know. The situation changed very quickly. 
and it came too suddenly. We could not have done anything earlier. The observatory has already issued warnings within a very short time. Members of the public should know about possible floods. I think the most important fact is that the black rainstorm warning was issued timely. As for us, yes, we have received a notification 45 minutes before and we made the press release 16 minutes before. But we don't just notify the public via press release. As soon as we were aware, we arranged departments, say, for example, the FSD, the SWD, the HAD, uh, to make arrangements to help the six villages that might be affected. We have not lost any time. It's just that on top of that, we published a press release to let the general public know. The most important thing is that we have taken action and we give priority to those in need. Next question. On my right at the front, uh, the lady with long hair in green. I'm from TVB. So exceeding the uh, design capacity of the drainages, what does it mean? What is its capacity currently? When did the rainfall exceed the capacity? Um, when was the last time when the uh, system or the drainage system was reviewed and uh, updated? Is it time for the whole drainage system to be reviewed and revamped? Well, from torrential rain to black rainfall, it was a very short time. Did you know that it was coming? You mentioned about flooding in north uh, in the new territories. It's the same for Taiwan. In the future, will you issue warnings to other places so that um, vehicles and people trapped in um, car parks could have a chance to do something? Tai Tam and Chai Wan experienced the heaviest rainfall. Total rainfall um, registered at over 600 millimeters. On an hourly basis, we have recorded 158.1 millimeters, which is um, the highest since 1884. For major drainage systems in the urban area, we have catered for precipitation. Um, that we have seen in the past 200 years. In short, we have experienced something that is heavier than what we have ever seen. We understand that the Guangdong province will be affected by the remnant of Haikui, and we knew that there would be rain and thunderstorm in Hong Kong. Torrential rains during the night mainly focused on the north district of Hong Kong. So at 7.45 p.m., we issued the torrential rain warnings as well as the uh, special announcement on flooding in new territories. At 8.25 p.m., the observatory issued a special warning reminding the public that there will be um, a lot of areas affected by the torrential rain. And at 9.25 p.m., we issued the yellow rainstorm warning. And at 9.50 p.m., we issued the red rainstorm warning. We wanted to remind the public that there will be serious flooding on roads as well as traffic congestion. As the torrential rain continued to affect Hong Kong at 11.05 p.m., we issued the first black rainstorm warning this year. As mentioned, after we issued the black rainstorm warning in the following hour, we recorded an hourly rainfall of 158.1 millimeters, which is the highest record since 1884 when the observatory was first established. Perhaps I can add a few words.
As mentioned, this extreme condition warning will last until midnight. At around 9 to 10 p.m. today, we will make an announcement to the public again to tell the public whether this extreme condition warning has to be continued. We have to first deal with the flooding. We will see whether we can resume traffic. We haven't seen such a heavy rainfall for a long time. We have to see if any roads have been damaged and we see if there are any risks of landslides. And this are what we will be doing throughout the evening. We hope that we can resume normalcy soon. We hope that the rain will stop soon. At around 9 to 10 p.m. tonight, we will make an announcement to the public again. We will make a report to the public. Thank you. We'll take two more questions. The one on my far right, the lady over there, please. I'm from Ta Kong Pao. During this torrential rain, we have seen serious flooding. A lot of uh, vehicles are stranded on roads. Why didn't the government make any forewarning on uh, traffic? And also, what considerations did you make before you issued the extreme conditions warning? If we are faced with the same situation next time, um, would you be able to take actions earlier? Secretary for Administration, please. Well, extreme conditions cover a wide meaning. It covers all kinds of situations. When accidents or incidents happen, which lead to, for instance, traffic issues or power outage in Hong Kong, which warrant public's concerns, then we make such an announcement. We have to look at it on a case-by-case -case basis. For instance, after the number 8 or number 10 typhoon, some trees were fallen which blocked roads. Those were also considered as extreme conditions. This time we're talking about torrential rain, and we haven't seen such a heavy downpours in a 100 years' time. And we weren't able to predict that beforehand. We saw that the traffic conditions and the flooding has caused a serious impact on the public. That's why we made such an extreme conditions warning. From the gov government's perspective, Of course, we hoped that we would be able to make an announcement as early as possible to the public. Typhoon Sala was a good example. We were able to issue a warning way beforehand. As mentioned, it was much easier for us to predict the path of the typhoon. We were able to see how far the typhoon would go within an hour's time. We were able to accurately make a prediction, but it's a different case for this torrential rain. And we aren't able to make an accurate prediction even with the existing technology. We aren't able to predict where uh, there will be serious rainfall and what the precipitation will be. Macau and Hong Kong are close to each other, but our situations are very different from each other. The predictability is low. This torrential rain caused an extensive flooding in Hong Kong. And we have to try our best to fix it. As mentioned, the extreme conditions warning will be in place for some time. And in the meantime, we will 
do our best to fix the situation. Until we see that the traffic condition or the general situation has resumed to normal, then we will lift the extreme conditions warning. Commissioner for Transport, please. We have seen a heavy rainfall and the situation changed rapidly, and we haven't seen such a situation before. In terms of traffic, as soon as we get the most updated information, we disseminated the relevant information through different channels. We disseminated the information um, on our transport department's mobile app and for services which were disrupted or affected, we also disseminated or updated the relevant information for the public. Also, public transport operators also made their announcements on their own platforms. We still have some time. We'll take at most two more questions. The lady in black at the front. Thank you. I'm from Dot Dot News. In case there is another rainfall that is so heavy, like this one, will you uh, make an announcement that work will be suspended? A lot of people went to work this morning, and it was dangerous for them. Also, in Shenwan, a man fell into the sea, and he died. Can the government release information or details about the incident or about the men? Secretary for Administration, please. Thank you for your question. We are seeing extreme conditions, and we are following arrangements like that under Typhoon Signal Number 8. As mentioned by the Secretary for Labor and Welfare, we're not imposing this arrangement across the board. Different, we see different requirements in different sectors. Uh, people working for um, residential care homes as well as hospitals, they have to go to work. So we cannot ask employers to suspend work in all industries or trades. We have been following this arrangement for some decades now, and under Typhoon Signal Number 8, most of the people do not have to go to work. However, if employers think that it is necessary for their workers to go to work, the employers will have to first watch for the safety of their employees also, the employers will have to think about whether their staff can go to work safely and smoothly, whether there are transport services. The employers and employees have to reach a consensus themselves. The arrangement under the Typhoon Signal Number 8 have been um, effective for years. And in extreme conditions like these, we refer to the arrangements that we adopt under Typhoon Signal Number 8. What is of paramount importance is that we want to safeguard the safety of employees and for those who have to go to work because of their work types, they have to make sure that they have the relevant um, means to go to work. These are uh, things that employers have to watch out for. In relation to the body found of uh, Shuntuk Center, well, that person has been sent to a hospital before I came here. The identity perhaps will be uh, made known to you after the press conference. Let's hear from the last reporter. On my right at the front in a windbreaker in orange, the lady. I'm from Phoenix TV. 
in relation to the black rainstorm warning. What is the financial loss? Do you think um, it, the suffer will be greater than that? You, you may answer in Cantonese. We'll, we'll hear from the S4S in relation to injuries and fatalities. At 1.35, we heard from the hospital authority that 115 people reported uh, that they have suffered injuries, and four of them are serious, but they're still conscious. And for the serious cases, two were from a traffic accidents and two from um, tripping. And there was a report about a person falling into a catchment area. We're following up on this uh, incident. We don't have any estimate when it comes to financial losses. That's the end of uh, the press conference. Stay safe.